So now next let's understand the O data on top of CDS. So I already explained that O data is open data protocol, which is an OISIS standard that defines best practice for building common um, and consuming restful APIs, which are stateless. The O data metadata, a machine readable description of data model of APIs, enables the creation of powerful generic client proxies and tools. So the purpose of O data is multi purpose. So O data not just alone used for the purpose of building Fury UIs, but they can be used for integration purpose. Suppose I remember in the past when we want to integrate our SAP system with a Java application or a .NET application, we used to call BAPIs. We used to call BAPIs through .NET connector or JCO connectors, and also we had a lot of different other techniques like IDOC or ALE to push data from a legacy system. But now with services, it becomes much easier because almost every programming language, be it Python, be it .NET, be it uh, Node.js or uh, or Java, they all support um, handlers and classes to uh, to access services. So this is a great advantage what we typically get here when it comes to working with the O data services uh, using uh, using the RESTful APIs. So now we will be building a set of uh, a simple application today, a Fury application. But before that, let's first build our O data service. So all the steps are given here. Um, these nine or ten steps we will be using eventually to build our end-to-end -end application. But first step, we will start with building O data. And I told you that there are two techniques to build O data services. One is CDS-based annotation, and second is SADL exposure. So we will learn both these techniques. Uh, maybe majority of you already aware of the second technique, but third technique you might not have used very often. So let us see this in action. I will switch over back. And here, what we will do is we will first create our O data. So guys, we have two things. One is the entity which we created today, and then we also have a CDS view which we uh, which we created. Yeah. So we will expose both with these two different techniques. So eventually, the end result is same. But these are two different techniques. So let us first build uh, on top of our CDS uh, view a simple O data service, which is expo going to expose sales data and also the items data as association because it's an exposed association here. So if I come back, it's fairly simple. Just put one annotation called O data dot publish equals to true. That's all. I'll save it and I will now activate this. That's all. Congratulations. Your O data is ready. Even you have no idea what O data is. If you are absolute beginner on O data, you have created successfully your first O data service in the system. But hold on. This service is created, but it is not registered yet. To register, we have to follow the same process which I did a few seconds ago for the standard SAP service. We have to just hover our mouse and copy this name from here to copy this name. So did you pay attention that this the service name which auto generates will have the same name as the CDS view name underscore CDS. That's the name of our service. So I will come back now to the main service transaction code which we just used few seconds ago to activate this standard SAP service and I go add service and I will now enter our generated service name from O data. Yeah, I press enter. I select and I click add selected service and I will say OK. Click OK. I am done. Yes. Now let us go back and see this in action. So I will switch over back and we can just run it. So how do I test it? So one way is if you know the URL already you can, but I'll show you a quick trick. So go on the left side in Eclipse called the outline tool. So this outline view and you see here secondary object of CDS O data exposure right click and say open. And of course I will now have to replace quickly this IP address here. So that I can access enter and oops I'm so sorry made a mistake. There you go. So this is our O data response now. Wow. And you see here it exposed my CDS as a entity set and my items also as another entity set so this is what we have done we've got our service document
first of all as a next step we will see how to access data so of course we pick the entity set name we go on the top and we press enter and this is our entity set data of all the sales order data so this you data looks not so user friendly of course so what we do is we put question mark dollar format equals to json to see this in the json format and now you see it will format in json now just an additional learning here i have added a browser plugin in my in my browser so that i can see this beautiful output you may not see this you will see a raw json so better you can also add it so just add json viewer plugin chrome and just go to json viewer plugin or json viewer extension these are different different of them you can use any one of them so you can use this json viewer plugin and add to your chrome browser so you can also see this beautiful output the way i see same way you can also see that the system i've added this one actually json view plugin so this i've already added you see this is what formats our json and make it look beautiful so please everyone on your system kindly add the o data annotation go to segw sorry go to main service decode register your service come back and go to outline view and just test our service access the entity set and access your data in the json format if needed please add this json viewer plugin in your browser chrome browser chrome is the recommended browser for both development and consumption so you've got five minutes everybody to do this exercise on your systems please service generation technique what's the purpose so as we know there are three techniques to build we already used annotations to build cds view but now we will use saddle why we need saddle so first main reason is you have no choice of name of the service right when we created the o data using cds annotation it gave a default name which is cds name underscore cds so i have literally no choice to actually go and change my view name change my o data name then the second reason is let's say in your company you built five different different cds views now you just want one o data service on top of these five cds views how do you do it because here each view is causing one o data it's one to one because the moment you put annotation it will actually publish this as one service but in general sometimes we want to build a big service with all the cds inside yeah so in that case you can go with saddle based approach for the cds implementation and there could be several reasons other reasons like you already have a audit service which is being used heavily in your company and you just built a cds and you want to add also the cds entities on top of existing o data built in your company for fury apps or for integration purpose so let's go back and we will now go to transaction code segw and here we will create first a gateway project and let's now i have a choice to give a name so i give zinv underscore xx that's our naming convention and I will say um, saddle. Yeah. Saddle based. So saddle, by the way, stands for service annotation description language, or I think A is, I am forgetting the name of A. I'll check that during the break. So saddle based service. It's very easy to create. And I will say local object. Now a gateway project is created. Next step is I will right click on data model and I will choose here import. Sorry, reference and reference data source. And now we will see here we will give a CDS entity name. So let us switch over back to our CDS entity and copy this CDS entity name and paste that over here in the GUI window. Click next. Wow. It reads my service and it reads associations. So I will want to also expose associations. Yeah, this is another benefit. Sometimes you want to expose CDS, but not associations. You can't control this in the auto generated service, but in the saddle, you can actually do that. This is fully controllable. It's all in your control. So now I click finish and you will see here it's auto generated. Nice. And we are good to go. 
So let us click on this generate button and click OK. And that's it. My service is created with my own naming naming convention with my own name. Yes, and next step is to just register this service. So this service will have a name as the project name underscore SRV. Yeah, that will be the name. So let's copy that. Come to main service T code. And choose add service. Put the service name underscore SRV. Of course, don't forget to do that. And let's click on select and add service. That's all. So now you got a service with your own name you like. And if you switch over back to the system and here I'm going to put my service name instead of um, instead of the CDS name, I press enter. I get my service document. I can again read this question mark or format goes to JSON and I will get my data once again for this. Now again, you have a advantage because we created association in the CDS. If you all remember in last class, because of that, now you automatically got an association here. So for each order, you can fetch the items of the order. You click and it will get you items of that particular order here on the screen. Wow. So it's a lazy loading, which is also available now to you on the screen directly to actually read the dependent data quite easily. This is the main benefit you get when it comes to working with associations. So the association get transformed into a association at O data level automatically, which we built in the in the CDS view yesterday. So this is a great advantage for association as well. You don't have to do extra coding by yourself to get this this work done. Yeah. Now the services which we generated automatically offers you the uh, the pagination capability. Suppose I want to just read uh, top two sales orders. So I can do dollar top equals to two and you see it reads only top two sales order. This is very helpful, especially when you build a mobile application and your sales order table contain 1 billion records 1 trillion records. You can't load all of them in mobile. So you need pagination. You need to load data chunk by chunk like 10 records 10 records 10 records. So that's where the OData provides you these these benefits of pagination using top and skip. So I loaded first two. User can see them next when users scroll down. I load next to so I say skip equals to two and then I'll skip first two and load next two. So this is a amazing feature which you get when it comes to working with O data service. The so called pagination feature which is out of the box from the Microsoft O data protocol. Cool.